This video is part one of a three-part series in which I will cover how to perform a CFD analysis of a nozzle based on a SpaceX Merlin engine. In this part, I will generate the geometry using the method of characteristics, create the geometry in SolidWorks, and I will create a mesh in ANSYS Fluent. Part two will cover running the case in OpenFoam, and finally, part three will show the results from a larger and more refined simulation. As always, all of the files needed to reproduce my results will be provided in a GitHub repository linked below. Along with the OpenFoam files, you'll find all of the programs I used. This project has taken me around a week and a half to put together, but I am still not completely satisfied with the results. For instance, I noticed that I have issues with pressure waves reflecting off the outlet. I've tried a few different boundary conditions, including wave transmissive and zero gradient, but these haven't seemed to solve it. For now, I just have extended the domain, but this isn't a completely satisfactory solution. I also need to do a bit more digging on the inlet condition. I noticed that when I had no inlet velocity, open foam would crash, warning of negative initial temperature. I think this was due to a pressure wave reflecting off the inside of the nozzle. My solution has been to add a little bit of initial velocity, but once again this seems somewhat unsatisfactory. I am also assuming all fluids have the rough thermophysical properties of air. This is also a simplification. In short, I hope you forgive some of the shortcomings of this project, realize that I am aware of many of them and I am actively familiarizing myself with different parts of open foam so I can improve. I am likely going to keep the theme of rockets going for a while. I think that they are a perfect playground for learning CFD. Some of my future ideas include analyzing injectors for multiphase flow mixing and combustion, turbo pumps to explore moving meshes, aerodynamics to sharpen my compressible and incompressible solver skills, re-entry for attempting some hypersonic and reacting flow analyses. These are just a few limited possibilities, but let me know in the comments below if you have any ideas, and I will definitely take them into consideration for future videos. Okay, now let's dive right into the video at hand. To start with some background, the nozzle, often known as a de Laval converging diverging, or simply a CD nozzle, works on a fairly simple principle. Flows accelerated down the converging section at subsonic speeds. It reaches Mach 1 at the nozzle's throat, and finally, the flow is further accelerated at supersonic speeds in the diverging section. This is all of the theory I'm going to cover in this video because open foam is a fairly advanced software i'm going to assume my viewers you all have a good understanding of the background knowledge needed for this type of analysis if you'd like more information i'll link to some videos i found useful down below the first step is to generate the nozzle geometry you'll find two files an excel file and a matlab code the parameters page is where you fill out the specifications for the nozzle you want and then the matlab code will read this page and output the design points to the pts page As you can see, I have some data in this Excel for Merlin engines, but you can also find more vehicles in the database for more vehicles link. Now we open the method of characteristics code. The first step, since I'm using Octave, is to download and load the IO package. This will allow Octave to read from Excel files to download, just use this command. Then you must load the package. If you're using MATLAB, you shouldn't have to use this. Now we can just run the code. And once again, this code takes all the input data from the Excel file provided. And as you can see, the code has outputted some design points for the nozzle geometry. Now we're going to export these to a text file. It is important, however, to add a third column for the Z direction. And I'm just going to make this all zero all the way down. And now we can export these design points to a text file. We will use this text file to load the nozzle geometry in SOLIDWORKS later. I'm just going to create a folder for this video. And then save the text file there. Now that we have our nozzle geometry, we can open up SOLIDWORKS. Okay, now we have SOLIDWORKS loaded. Now 
let me just pull it into this monitor. It is important to ensure that you're using the same units in SOLIDWORKS as you used in the MATLAB code. In my case, I'm using centimeters, so just make sure to go into your units setting in SOLIDWORKS and change it to the appropriate setting. And now we can just import our curve through the XYZ points, browse for that text file that we created earlier, and then you just import the points. Now we're going to create our domain geometry. To do this, I'm just going to add some design points along the spline, make a spline, add the combustion chamber section, and just create a spline through the entire thing. I'm going to go through this fairly quick. The combustion chamber dimensions I chose are somewhat arbitrary because I couldn't find data on it. These are just what worked for me. It is important to realize that when doing a CFD simulation, you define the geometry for the domain and not the part itself. So that's what we're gonna do here. Just create the domain in which the flow will be flowing. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to create a fairly small domain. Although, in the repository, you'll find a file for a much larger domain as well. You could just model half of the domain and then mirror it for post-processing, but I wanted to capture some of the effects that can only be seen when the full 2D domain is specified. So now I'm just gonna mirror the geometry I created. And I'll fix my relations issue by just deleting symmetric relation. Now this geometry isn't fully defined, but I'm just going to keep it this way for the video. And ensure that your geometry is closed, which it looks like mine is. I'm just checking my geometry here, and now we're going to insert a planar surface. And that's it, your geometry is specified in SOLIDWORKS. Now we're going to save this part as a parasolid. This will allow us to import it into ANSYS for meshing. I'm just going to call it domain underscore p for parasolid and save it as a parasolid. Now we open up our ANSYS workbench and insert a mesh component system. Import our geometry that we just created. And open up meshing. I'm just going to generate the basic mesh so I can see what ANSYS is initially looking at. And the way I generated the mesh was I just created edge sizing on every edge and then a face mesh. 
this is the method that worked best for me, but you can try your own methods and let me know in the comments what works best for you. This method was how I got the best orthogonal quality for myself, but maybe try and improve on it yourself. And as you can see, I have an all quads method and the mesh looks fairly good and high quality. Now I'm just going to create my name selections. Front and back just refers to the front and back planes. These will be empty boundaries for open foam. I'm going to select all to select the inlets and outlets and just call it everything else wall. I'm going to name my inlet. My second inlet. The reason I put these second inlets was without them. I noticed a sort of vacuum effect when the nozzle fired, probably due to the domain being fairly small, and this would cause my nozzle to be wildly underexpanded. And finally the outlet. These name selections are important for specifying the boundary conditions in open foam later. Now make sure you're exporting in the correct format, which I am. And then finally export the mesh to your preferred file location. Notice that I accidentally didn't change the meshing physics to CFD. And although I didn't have any issues with this, you should make sure to do it. Okay, and that's it for part one. In part two, I will show you how to run this case in open foam. I will show you all the boundary conditions I specified. And then finally in part three, I will show you the results for a bigger case I ran. Stay tuned and please like the video and leave any comments or questions you have in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for part two.